Go out a little liquor. They buy the gun, die by the gun. My mom said always said when I was young I wouldn't last long. She said I was too crazy, only concerned with making babies. Never looking for work. The streets raised me for more. Schooled and lost a currency by the ways of robbery. Thought they never stop me. I keep it way too greasy. But like all good things, sometimes they gotta end. My memory lives on in every system that you want to see. It's my last ride, my last time, my last rhyme The last of the real G's that had truly crossed the line Don't shed a tear for me, my shit was history And how they feel for me will never be a mystery My memory is stronger than the faith that's in that reverend Laying my body to the ground and all my people's around My last ride, my last ride I'll see you on the other side It's so hard to say goodbye, I really don't wanna say goodbye My last ride, you was hating everything I said I was living suicidal, rolling with the walking dead. My last ride, I was looking in from the outside. My last ride was so tired. Converse gonna be alright. My last ride with the Reaper in the 45. My last ride in the plane, no parachuting sky. Die. My last ride. I'm on my way to my funeral service. My last ride. I'm not crying cause I know I deserve it. My last ride. Put my body in that coffin and drop me. My last ride. I was destined to ride, nothing could stop me. My last ride. I'm on my way to my funeral service. My last ride. I'm not crying cause I know I deserve it. My last ride. Put my body in the coffin and drop me. My last ride. I was destined to ride, nothing could stop me. The last time I seen that shell, well damn, I pierced the forehead and exploded the head of that man. And as his body crumbled, check this here. I picked that casing up and I had to shed a tear. Cause I knew and it knew we'd never see again. Forensic cops had took my little Friend. I had to skip town and leave my baby bubble But I'm cold when the last moments I watch a head splatter Don't follow me, make your own way It's too many baby G's laying in the casket today And that's a shame Pull out a sip of 40 but it won't bring your homie back Cause when you live by the gas, you gon' end up on your back Wearing a suit covered in dirt like a sycamore tree My homie's gone in this reality and sad to see his family And all the riders welling up and breaking down But this is last Ride as we commend his body to the ground. My last ride. I'm on my way to my funeral service. My last ride. I'm not crying because I know I deserve it. My last ride. Put my body in that coffin and drop me. My last ride. I was destined to ride, nothing could stop my me. My last ride. I'm on my way to my funeral service. My last ride. I'm not crying because I know I deserve it. My last ride. Put my body in the coffin and drop me. My last ride. I was destined to ride, nothing could stop my me. My last ride. I'm no bullet, I'm a spin. Up shell, full of pent up hell. My rider cartel was hard as hell. I love them, I'll admit it. My whole life was exquisite. When it was time to ride, we never whined, we just did it. I'll be a rider, whether up in heaven or hell. Now that I'm motherfucker dead, I hope my records will sell. I'm on my last ride. My hearse is black like I predicted. Bury bullet with the strap and put the loaded clip up in I it. Remember this my last every last ride. second, gasping, getting no love. Shaking from the shock, open wound, oozing blood. The last time for everything, scrapping in the street, smoking weed, riding through the hood, letting off my heat. I gotta stay strong, hold on and hope someone to come along. Daddy always told me learn my right from wrong. So when you bury me, take care of me. Free drinks on the house, six gun salute from my riders right before they ride out. My last ride, I'm on my way to my funeral service. My last ride, I'm not crying cause I know I deserve it. My last ride, put my body in that coffin and drop me. My last ride, I was destined to ride, nothing could stop me. My last ride, I'm on my way to my funeral service. My last ride, I'm not crying cause I know I deserve it. My last ride, put my body in that coffin and drop me. My last ride, I was destined to ride, nothing could stop me. My last ride, yo, it's all about my homeboys. My last ride. Hey, what's up? Well, I guess first off, if you're listening to the sound of my voice right now, 
either you figured out the super secret riddle at the end of episode 53, or you cheated and got the answer through nefarious means. One way or another, I'm happy to know at least a few people out there are listening, but be warned, because tonight is going to be a much different type of show than usual. I mean, obviously, what you heard with episode 53 was the cheerful goodbye, in which I gave thanks to all the people who made this show possible, but tonight, tonight is all about the good stuff. So, just for the record, I'm not here to plug any bands or their websites, and I'm certainly not here to be entertaining or funny, but then again, when have I? So, what I am here for is to take you behind the scenes and tell you all the secrets and all the dirt that people have been wondering about since we first started. For example, everyone probably knows by now that episode 10, our completely instrumental edition, also known as the beginning of the end, was easily my least favorite episode of all time, but did you also know that I thought the first 12 episodes in general were pretty damn terrible, as I only truly felt like we had something even remotely decent starting with episode 13. Now, maybe that isn't anything too groundbreaking, or even really captivating, but by the end of the night, you'll find out all the juicy info, ranging from shows that never happened, to people banned from ever appearing in any way, shape, or form on this show again. Either way, you may have noticed that the intro was missing this week, and that's because I thought I'd waste everyone's time, straight off the top, by playing all three songs back to back. So, if you've ever been too stupid to figure out where our intro comes from, here now is 8-Bit Suicide, Electric Dragon, and Mindless Self-Indulgence. Looking back, say what don't pinky head You are nothing more 
Hopefully you enjoyed sitting through all that. I don't know. I guess since we're starting off small and working our way up to all the big stuff, I should probably get the more boring details and questions out of the way first. I know a lot of people only started listening a few months back, so for those of you who keep asking and are too lazy to go back into the show's archives, all you need to know is that the show itself got its name from the cult Jim Jones started a number of decades ago. For those unaware, the cult members referred to themselves as the Rainbow Family, as they were his Rainbow Children, and since my band name, The Great Kool-Aid Experience, 
was taken off of the mass suicide that occurred when they all drank grape flavor aid laced with poison. I just thought the Rainbow Family Podcast was a pretty fitting name for the show, even though we now get hippies and the gay community constantly harassing us. Now, musically speaking, the show was meant to be an audio replacement for the website Trashy Beats, ran by D and Levy, who used to promote a number of electropunk bands, but obviously I decided to branch out and include some 8-bit music and nerdcore hip-hop, as well as a handful of other stuff here and there. It's funny, because as I was clearing out an old Hotmail account last week, I noticed a letter I had sent to them asking to be a part of their glorious website, although by that point it was already too late, as things were in the process of shutting down, but realistically, my stuff was beyond horrible back then anyways, and really didn't deserve the time of day from anyone on that site. Either way, somehow this thing started up, and in my opinion, we went on to inspire a number of shows, ranging from the Dirty Nerdy Podcast, hosted by MC Router and T-Byte, which lasted one episode, to Rated R for Roxer, hosted by Kapow, which also lasted only one episode, to the Even James Has a Podcast podcast, hosted by Dally Doll and King James, which is actually returning in a couple of months. And then finally, in my opinion, we also influenced Dix, a podcast hosted by the one and only Devi, who previously ran Retard Radio back in the day, which she no longer likes to talk about. Having said that, however, if there was one radio show that I ripped off in order to launch the RFP, it was most likely the Mike and Phil show, hosted by Mike H. of Major Group Daiquiri and Phil Giroux of Tom Green fame. So, hopefully that clears up everyone's questions, and in the meantime, here's the Mike and Phil show theme song, as written and performed by Mike Diva. Man, there's nothing on TV. Yeah, man, these shows are broke as fuck. I have an idea. Let's see what's on the internet. Yeah, the internet. Mike and Phil are internet sensations. They know that they are better than you, and they are God's greatest creation. Tackling tough issues that matter together, best friends for life. They are the one and only cure for our nation. What would you do for the Mike and Phil show? What's your favorite radio show? The Mike and Phil show. Mike Hickey pissed his bed from ages 10 to 13. Mike and Phil, they are your best friends too. Mike and Phil, they are your best friends too. So, there you have it. A lovely little jingle about bedwetting or something. I have no idea. Either way, I've now discussed the origins of the show, as well as where the name came from, and what I consider to be the worst of the shows that I personally hosted, but now I think it's time to see where everyone else ranked. Now, let me start off by saying that this is just my personal opinion based on performance, and nothing personal against the people who stepped in. I mean, obviously, I liked a lot of the special guest-hosted episodes, ranging from Devi and 60XL to CT, Role Model, and especially MC Snack Time, but I think my favorite guest host of all time probably had to be Richie, thanks to the interviews he did with Mike Diva and MC Snack Time, not to mention some of the new music he brought to the show. On the other hand, I'll admit to not being a huge fan of the episode Spratzaman and Katasumi did, which was a little weird, a little long, and had a really bizarre interview at the end, which seemingly lasted forever. But, hands down, the worst guest hosted episode in the history of the show had to be Leader Misty, which was basically a really terrible inside joke 
for the people over at vflaw.net and consisted mostly of really shitty Pokemon themed music that was unbearable to even listen to. All in all though, I think every show, except that last one, had its bright spots, and Richie and MC Snack Time really showed what the show could have been if we had a little more time, some better equipment, and a decent budget. But, anyways, we'll get to more on Richie a little later on in tonight's show, as there's lots of stuff no one ever knew about during the time he hosted for a few weeks. But, before then, let's be honest. Obviously, Leader Misty was a character created in the sick and twisted mind of the one and only Devi Sparkles, and though I'm sure people are sick of hearing about Devi on this show, and are ready to abduct and murder her, I don't think a lot of people realize just how much she's done for us. I mean, Devi was the first person to guest host, which she did on a few days notice. She also created our banners. Um, thanks to her, we always had a ton of new material to play. And, all in all, I drew a lot of inspiration from just talking to her on a daily basis. What you might not know is that Devi was set to play a much bigger role on this show, which ended up falling through. But before we get to that, what do you say we mix it up a little here and get to Devi's thoughts on our one year anniversary? Sparkles, and today I'm here to talk to you about the dangers of heroin abuse. Hi, I'm Debbie Sparkles, and today I'm here to talk to you about my very favorite radio show. And here to help me commemorate one whole year spent listening to the Rainbow Family Podcast is my younger sister, Nicole Sparkles. Say hello, Nicole. Hi. Hey, so Nicole is also a huge fan of the Rainbow Family Podcast. Tell us a little bit about that. What's your favorite episode? My favorite episode is number 237, and the highest moment of that would probably have to be when they played Bob to the Top from High School Musical. Who's that by again? Um, um, Ashley Tisdale and some other dude was in it, but I love Ashley Tisdale. I love Ashley Tisdale too. I, every time I hear that song on the Rainbow Family Podcast, I just can't help but sing along to it. I know. It's so catchy. Bop, 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 bop to, to the, the top. top. I love it! See, we share the same taste in music, don't we? Yeah, so, well, that's it! Bye, Bye guys! Congratulations on your one whole year in podcasting. We're your biggest fans, right, Nicole? Yeah! <laughs> Sit in front of the camera. Oh, I can't stop doing this! Muscle, choose a muscle. 
say to that, but I guess you'd better bop to the top. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank Devi and her sister Nicole, but now it's time that we get to the good stuff. You see, originally I wanted to add a bi-monthly news segment to this show that informed everyone on upcoming shows, albums, merchandise, tour dates, and other info the general public might be interested in, and originally a number of people asked to do it, from fans of the show to the artists themselves, but I went with someone I shouldn't have, who shall be named later, and unfortunately everything fell through. So after coming back from my Christmas vacation, I decided to try it again, only this time I handed everything over to Devi. Well, Devi recorded the first news segment, and it was so negative to half the bands we play that I had no other choice but not to air it. Don't get me wrong, I'd like to think we run a pretty uncensored show around here, but Devi telling Richie to kill himself just isn't really the goal of the show, you know? Well, for the first time ever, we're finally reaching into the vaults, as we are going to air Devi's new segment completely uncensored and in its entirety. So, here now is the pilot episode of Super Insider Drama Report Tonight, hosted by the one and only Devi Sparkles. Enjoy! Hey, you're still listening to the RFP. It's surprising, I know, stimulating audio for your ears on the RFP. Who would have thunk it? Oh, hi. I'm Devi, lead, lead singer of E Babies, Internet Sensation, drummer for UPD, backwoman for OFMG, general fan of Tuan, current producer for Raggedy Angry, and former producer of the UC. You probably know me from that VFAG.A promo that they play a hundred thousand times on this show. I bet you're annoyed to hell already. Okay, well, I'm here to present to you a new project, a new expedition. It will take you on a trip. A journey, if you will. It is the Super Insider Drama Report tonight! Well, the point of this bit is to come on every two weeks and annoy you fags, but also, also, to let you know what's happening in the scene. Not musically, because that's not really important to me, but what's happening between the little faggoty members of the bands. What's going on, what kind of drama, what kind of hate is going on, and all that shit, all that good shit. I'm totally obsessed with the scene. I love it, I think about it every second of the day. And that's probably why I'm so crazy, but... Okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, this, today, 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 I'm going to introduce you to what's happened so far. This is a story so far. This is a refresher course, a crash course, a 101 course, if you will. I said course enough times, right? Still. Okay. Okay, so this, the point of this, this first installment of this pro... <coughs> <coughs> So the point of this first installment is to let you know what's going on, what's happened to this point in the scene. Alright, everybody in the world hates Richie from Switchy. Music is poop. Your music is poop. Your music is Aside from Richie generally being a shitty person, he also went on vflaw.net and made a couple very infamous long posts about how the scene sucks. Somehow he thought it was a good idea to annoy the small fan base he had by insulting them, so he's not so popular anymore. Tell you nobody gives a fuck. And hey, guess what? You still fucking suck. Fuck TSC and fuck J Gambit. Fuck TSC and fuck J Gambit. Both those names don't mean a damn thing. 
Next on the awesome list of hatred, Mr. G hates J Gambit. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. This is because I don't really know. I'm not really sure. I think. I think Mr. G's not too into him. I don't know. I don't know really. I don't know. He wrote a song called Fuck J Gambit. I'm gonna play a little clip right here. You've got problems. Fuck J Gambit, my biscuit of the sea. Always claiming you're the best, man, you're living in a dream. See, nobody cares about your stupid ass band. No matter how much you lie about your millions of fans. Remember when you got caught stealing beats? Then you cried about it. Oh man, that was sweet. All your songs are emo. All your songs okay. are Okay, now, Sprats. Sprats is from Electric Dragon, which I'm sure you've heard of. They play it in the intro. The song is like, I'll cut your throat. Ooh, I'll cut your throat. That that one, that one. That's that's Sprats. Sprats is a really good musician. He's from Eat. Uh, sorry. He's from Electric Dragon. Bizarre Drag Queen is now BDQ. It's some like Bulgarian name. I don't know really how to say it. It's like really faggoty. I don't really something about Batman. I think and niggers. Uh. It's not important. And he's from like some noise core bands and the ripoffs. He's really cool, but he he just hates everyone in the scene. He, I mean stuff like that. So he's kind of just generally yeah, but he's not a prick like Switchy or Rishi or whatever. It's not important. Moving on. I'm a pussy. That's point four or three. I'm not really sure, but I'm a pussy. Me and Ben from <coughs> a band called Does Not Fuck Around or DFNA. Yeah, that's how you spell. Uh, and we basically were mods on Vlog. Vlog.gay. I like that one better. Uh, and so we were mods, and we we're like, hey, lol, let's destroy the board. So we deleted every post. Whoa! to the ground. Children, in the years that will come to pass, let it never be said that Ben fucked around. <laughs> Ben does not fuck around. And I was a pussy afterwards and was like, I'm sorry. But Ben was like, Ben does not fuck around. And Ben did not fuck around. He never said he was sorry. And he was like, yo, cock tonguer, you tongue cocks, lol. And cock tonguer didn't, he wasn't so into that. You know, since, you know, cock tonguer was getting called cock tonguer, you know, that's... It's not very nice to do after you destroy someone's entire website, you know. It's not a nice thing, and I am sorry, but it's hilarious. Okay, moving on. My no cell indulgence. Uh, Miles. Self inductance, mindless salts, and uh, who sounds like a bunch of fags. Uh, all right, so Ben got banned from the forums because. Well, he deleted them. I mean, that does make sense that you would get banned after destroying something, right? So, we created a secret forum. It's really cool. There's lots of exciting shit that you're not allowed to see because if you went there, you'd fuck up our website for you. So we're not telling you about it. It's a secret forum. Anyways, KXL likes dicks. La 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 la. Stevie likes sticks, la 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 la. Teddy likes sticks, la 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 la. Ben likes vaginas. Too bad he can't touch one, la 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 la. Okay, that's all the time I really have for today. So I think we're gonna play Mike H from Daiquiri is a faggot by Sprats from Electric Dragon. And then after that, I think 
just to spice things up a little bit more, I'm gonna do a cover of another song, but change the words so it applies to the scene and the drama and the excitement going on in the scene every week. So, well, every other week, since I'm only on every other week. And for the first time, I think I'm gonna do a song called Be and Hero Richie. And it's about telling Richie to kill himself because he kind of sucks and he's, he's kind of boring and he's kind of annoying and kind of a jerk. You know, we talked on MSN and he was kind of a jerk to me and um, I want him to kill himself. Really? That's it. Plain and simple. Be and hero. And hero is uh, for those kids who aren't so hip, so cool, so awesome to be into the slang that the kids are into today. And hero is when a failure kills him or herself. And so I'm telling Richie to kill himself and it's all like dramatic and deep and it's wonderful, okay? You gotta believe me, it's a good one. Till next week, uh, gotta think of a cool sign up phrase. Go fuck yourselves! This is Debbie, I'm out. Look at that faggot, he a bitch. He's got a big chin and a nasty itch. His hair is all blonde cause he bends down. And he takes golden showers from a green gown. Mike makes music and it's all crap. He steals cool stuff and he makes it sound bad. China tried to dance, she shook her dick. But never underestimate the power of her clip. There's the fat guy and she gave him a punch. He wakes up shy and he's having a hunch. She inserted her clip inside of his dick. Now his cock always fucking obese. Michael H is a faggot. Mike H is a faggot bitch. Michael H is a faggot. Mike H. He's a faggot bitch I sent him my request and I ask him stuff Suddenly he's getting all big and tough I ask him what was up and he doesn't reply Cause he a fag faggot and I want him to die I want a green card and he did not He set the guy's dick right on the spot Report me a Canadian cause he's got AIDS He got it after having sex with black mermaids Michael H is a faggot Mike H is a faggot bitch. Michael H is a faggot. Mike H is a faggot bitch. Michael H is a faggot. Mike H is a faggot bitch. Michael H is a faggot. Mike H is a faggot bitch. I don't get lit and I'm not very clever, but at least I know that I can lift my own lever. I can't really sing and my English is bad But that doesn't change the fact that Michael is a douchebag Mike is a pussy, he ain't straight He ignored my shit, now it's too late Next time you get bothered, just tell the man Resentimental shit, I knew you can Michael H is a faggot Mike H is a faggot, bitch Michael H is a faggot Mike H He's a faggot bitch. Michael H is a faggot. Mike H is a faggot bitch. Michael H is a faggot. Mike H is a faggot bitch. Kill yourself. Would you die if I asked you to die? If I said jump, would you say how high? If I set off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff? Would you be an hero tonight? You can be an hero, baby. You can take away the pain. I will laugh at you forever. So, there you have it. Some people might think I was wrong to pull it, seeing as we try to be a pretty open show around here, and clearly it was entertaining as all hell, and would have been awesome to hear every two weeks. But, I always wanted to use this show in order to help promote people, and bring them closer together, 
and obviously telling people to go kill themselves in between playing this tracks and laughing over vflaw.net, who happens to host our show, getting deleted just wasn't really the best idea in my opinion. But there you go, Debbie's highly entertaining news segment that eventually led to her starting Dicks, a podcast which should be back from hiatus at some point in the near future, although possibly under a different name or brand new format. Either way, there's plenty more to get to, but first, how about some brand new Eat Babies? This is... <clears throat> That's better. You're listening to the Rainbow Family Podcast, and I'm David from Eat Babies. Work, boots. that out of the way, what do you say we start getting to the really good stuff? I mean, as I mentioned earlier, I had originally considered a few people to host a new segment every second week, and that new segment actually leads to one of three people who were banned off this show for life. Now, I'm sure a lot of people can guess one of the three individuals no longer welcome around here, but the first person is someone you've probably never even heard of. See, a while back, I was looking for some new content for this show, and as luck would have it, our good friend Jordan Style stepped up and suggested a number of bands he was really into. Well, among those bands happened to be a group known as Sad Panda, who we eventually ended up playing once or twice, and at that point, everything was pretty cool. So, when I first started looking for someone to host a new segment, I decided I should probably find someone new, and that's when the guitarist of Sad Panda stepped in. Originally, I wasn't going to choose him, as I needed someone familiar with 8-bit, electropunk, and nerdcore hip-hop, which I didn't think he was able to cover all three, but after getting super offended and super pissy about the whole thing, I finally decided to give him a chance, since he was so insistent over the entire deal. Well, what a mistake that turned out to be, as he missed the deadline, 
never answered his emails, disappeared off the face of the planet, and then got mad several months later that I stopped playing his band, claiming he was drugged up out of his mind when he agreed to do the new segment, followed by ranting about how much this show sucked. So, even though you've probably never heard of them, Sad Panda were the first group to be banned from this show. The second band in question, unfortunately doesn't have an exciting story, but after becoming extremely annoying and lame, and after spamming the hell out of me, and the website, Technicooter, another band you've probably never heard of before, became the second band, no longer welcome on this show. Of course, that just leaves us with one, and as you heard in Devi's Super Insider Drama Report Tonight piece, or as you saw in vflaw.net if you post there, the third and final group to be banned from the RFP were Tin Soldier Empire, or more specifically, Jay Gambit. Now, I never wanted to use this show to cut anyone down, and I certainly hate promoting people I hate, but this is a special occasion, so if you want to know why Jay Gambit was banned off this show, here you go. You know, it's kind of sad when someone can start off so humble, then go on to become an outright egotistical delusional jackass. I mean, it's really not that hard to rip off a few bands and create some hype for yourself, but when you actually start to believe all your own bullshit, then you've got problems. Fuck Jay Gambit, Limp Biscuit of the Sea. Always claiming you're the best, man, you're living in a dream. See, nobody cares about your stupid ass band. No matter how much you lie about your millions of fans. Remember when you got caught stealing beats? Then you cried about it, oh man, that was sweet. All your songs are emo, all your songs are trash. Don't bother with production, it's a waste of cash. Fuck TSC, you never did a damn thing. Except make up stories and try to sing. Plus you talk about people behind their back. Yet when face to face, you always lick their sack. Claim you're the biggest band in the scene Don't make me laugh, you're absolutely nothing So I'm here to tell you nobody gives a fuck And hey, guess what? You still fucking suck Fuck TSC and fuck J Gambit Fuck TSC and fuck J Gambit Both those names don't mean a damn thing Fuck TSC and fuck J Gambit Do you hear this beat? It's totally whack Cause I wouldn't waste the time on a TSC attack I wrote and recorded this thing in no time If you're really not worth any well-written line I hope that your bandmates aren't feeling sore Then again, your lineup's a revolving door It's okay, we all know why they had to go Cause there's just no room with your massive ego Everything about you is a great big lie Do us all a favor, kill yourself, just die Cause nobody cares about your shitty ass band Your name's a punchline and your music's quite bland You think that you're a shit but you're really just a joke Please don't play the victim, this isn't unprovoked No, once upon a time you weren't half bad It's a shame you turned out so fucking sad Fuck TSC and fuck J Gambit Fuck TSC and fuck J Gambit Both those names don't mean a damn thing Fuck TSC and fuck So hey, feel free to claim it's jealousy, feel free to act as though it's unprovoked, but understand something, nobody cares about Tin Soldier Empire. As a matter of fact, your biggest accomplishment was Mike Diva even acknowledging your existence, which is funny after all the shit you talk behind his back. No up and coming bands are sucking your dick, you're not the biggest band in any scene, although I will say that it must be nice having a rich mommy and daddy to support your music hobby. So straight up, fuck you. This entire song is beyond beneath me, but unlike you, I won't say anything behind your back that I'm afraid to say directly to your face. Now let's all take time to reflect on just how much you fucking suck. Okay, so, 
Hopefully that answers everybody's questions, considering I don't think I could have made that song any much clearer. But, I'm not going to waste any more time cutting people down, as that type of stuff is really pointless, and immature, and even beneath me, believe it or not. Plus, I now think it's time we finally talk about Richie. See, Richie tends to be one of those people you either love and admire, or one of those people you hate so much, you wish they'd get AIDS. There's really no middle ground or in-between. But, when Vincent Flaw totally bailed on episode 28, Richie really stepped in to save the day, much to my surprise, by asking to host three episodes in a row. Well, as most people should know by now, he only ended up hosting two, as episode 31 remains missing to this very day, but there is a lot of stuff no one has ever known about. First of all, the reason episode 31 never happened is because unfortunately, Richie's entire computer crashed, causing him to lose everything he had on there. What you also didn't know was episode 31 wasn't to be his last show. See, on episode 31, Richie had a huge interview with BitShifter already recorded, and had already conducted an hour-long phone interview with D, the former co-owner of Trashy Beats, an all-around awesome chick, for the next trilogy of shows he was planning. Richie also had more rare material on his playlist, and had a few more interviews to do, including one with me. How ironic, right? But, unfortunately, after the computer crash, that was it. All in all, however, he really helped me out, and really helped out the show, and it's really unfortunate that four out of the six episodes he had planned never happened. By the way, I ended up renaming the episodes he did as The Takeover, Parts 1 and 2, and while I don't remember what Part 2 was originally called, the first show he did was first named We Were The Scene and Other Assorted Flavors, much like the episode 60 x self-hosted, entitled Next Song, was originally named Guinea Pigs. So, if you want to update your archives, knock yourselves out. Either way, I'm getting sick of talking, so here now is some Richie from Switchy. Kids and kittens of 1999. This is for you. Should have been a good girl. 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 Should have He's good at a key picture and tons of nine inch polish nails. I never knew what I had to lose, but now I really know I should have been a Tell me this wasn't We are getting closer to the end of this week's show, but speaking of Richie, who only hosted two out of six episodes planned, and speaking of Vincent Flaw, who bailed out and seemed to think I hate them for whatever reason, 
there's only been two more guest episodes not to go through. The first one being MC Snack Time, hosting for a second time, even though he was offered episode 52, and the second group who were supposed to host but never did were the Care Bear Mafia. Although a lot of stuff was supposed to happen with them, that never did. Either way, in my never-ending quest to show Mike and Max how much I truly love them, despite them thinking that I hate their guts, here now is Unicorns and Kittens by Vincent Flaw, as requested by Mike Diva. Seriously, go look it up on the Flaw, as we get ready to wrap up this show. <laughs> this is Ryan from Bunny Suit Classics. Mm-hmm. Okay. The RFP was here for me since day one. I would confide in the RFP. We'd take night <laughs> we'd take late night walks. We'd call each other and plan out mit- matching outfits. <laughs> we had matching ringtones. I always had one question that I never wanted to ask. Because I knew we had something special. Something special I had with no other podcast. <coughs> okay, I'm, I'm okay. I still got my ringtone. Okay, I'm, I'm, oh my, I'm okay. Mm. <sighs> Okay, from day one I was wondering Why are all Vincent Flaw fans fat chick?
find an infinite You know, call me crazy, but I think Vincent Flaw would sell a million albums if all their songs were like that. Anyways, over the course of this fine, fine evening, you've heard segments that were banned, you've heard about shows and interviews that never happened, you found out which groups were banned, you got to know my honest thoughts on people linked to the show, but before I sign off, here are some random tidbits that don't fit in anywhere else. Okay, for starters, Daiquiri offered to be interviewed on this show, as have many other bands, but we never had the means in doing so. Plus, everyone crapped on Richie's interviews with MC Snacktime and Mike Diva. Next up, there were some things I did on this show that I wish I hadn't, like the Virginia Tech jokes done purely for shock value, since this show was losing its edge. Um, obviously, I don't think we ever did 8-bit music any justice whatsoever. And finally, I never really thought that anyone would care either about the show itself or especially its ending. So, I'm getting ready to say goodbye, but up first, here's one final song. It's here right now, is Revival by Jesus. So, here you go, Mr. Grape. This is 60X Self, and I want to offer my most heartfelt appreciation for the Rainbow Family Podcast. It's a bright spot on my Saturdays after work, and carries through for a few days after that because they're so damned long, and I just don't sit at the computer long enough to get it all in one sitting, you know? Anyway, you're always pimping my spoken word material, pimping me and Debbie as tune, and you were even kind enough to allow me to host an episode of it and to do a segment in another episode. The Rainbow Family Podcast and you yourself are one of the biggest supporters I have as a vocalist. So, happy one year anniversary for the Rainbow Family Podcast. Though it is bittersweet, what would the date also mark in the end as we know it? And congratulations for keeping it going for an entire year and for developing the fan base that has gathered. Kudos, mate. Frightening, cracking and igniting when we are fighting. Let's make the liberation because I'm impatient. Gonna become your assailant if you keep acting vacant. This is the revival of the finish. Step to me, we can through you in your mission. Now we trade blows, but we used to trade kisses. This is what it becomes when shit turns ridiculous. Used to be the ties that bind, but our ties might have got intertwined. Friction then may have led to a break. Working its way out day after day after day You were a close friend, one I believed in I know it's possible for these bits to commit But it takes someone to be a sweat in And I ain't about rebuilding, plan on tearing it down again So put yourself out of denial I know you can feel my revival The first time they struggle and fall Land out you, I'm the kill stand tall This is the revival of the finish I'm a bottle of lightning, a little bit frightening Cracking and igniting when we are fighting Let's make the liberation because I'm impatient Gonna become your assailant if you keep acting vacant Make it policy to be civil to me Please you'll be afforded from my life like a team Or getting a monthly Quickly get it in your psyche Revival of the fitness means you'll end up below me This is the revival of the fitness Death to me, I'll be tearing through you in your business Now we trade blows, but we use to trade kisses This is what it becomes when shit turns ridiculous This is the revival of the finish Death to me, I'll be tearing through you in your business Now we trade blows, but we use to trade kisses This is what it becomes when shit turns ridiculous
Well, that is our show. I don't have any sort of big ending lined up, but I will leave you now with my unfinished demo version of Go With The Flow by Queens of the Stone Age. And, um, yeah. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for a great first year. Thanks for all the memories. And, goodbye. It's snack time. What's up? Yeah, I, uh, I ran. Um. No, um, did I, uh, did I miss? Did I miss the end of the show? Did you already? Yeah. Oh. Why? No, no, it's, it, it's cool. I was, you know, I was, um, I was just in the, I was just in the area, you know, I was in, um, California. 
Um, no, 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 it's cool. Um, do you, do you have anything to drink? Um, here, do you want some water? No, that's, that's perfect. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So, um, so you're done, huh? Yep. Oh, well, okay. Um, I mean, you, you, you've already like recorded and everything like you're done, you're done, done, done. Like no more. Yeah, I mean, show's over, you know. Oh, oh, hold Hello? on a second. No, I'm I'm in Canada, dude. No, no, <laughs> I'm trying to get on this. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a call. Okay, okay, bye. Sorry about that. Um, so it's all done, huh? Fifty, fifty-three episodes. You're all done. Yep. Well, I mean, you know, that's cool. I guess I just. So no more guest hosting for me. Well, it's kind of hard, because... Okay. No, no, I mean, I understand you got, like, a life, and you got other stuff, and, like, you know... Hey... No, I'm, no, it's cool, it's cool, like, yeah, I, understand, I understand, you know, I'm I, I'm a busy guy, too, obviously, you know, I, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if the show's done, I mean, like, do you have, do you have plans after this? You want to, like, you know... Well, I don't know, I, I mean, don't, I, or, 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 like, get something to eat? I mean, that works, too, you know, just, like... You know, we could go to dinner. Yeah. If you're not, you know, too busy. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's just like, you know, because I, I came all this way and everything. Well, sorry. It's no, just... no, it's cool. I mean, I, 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 no, 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 it's, it's, it's cool, man. It's cool. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I guess, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm just going to go to, I'm, j- I'm just going to go visit Nils. You know, that it's cool. I mean, he's, he's in the same country, right? Like, Yeah. It's yeah okay no no it's cool it's cool all right okay well um I don't know I guess I guess call me I'll do my best all right bye yeah later say hi to Nils for me man I don't know what his problem is the show's coming back in September. <laughs>